It's one of the big talking points uh, yesterday in the midterm budget. A lot of people, especially in Gauteng, were waiting to hear the word e-tolls. And finally, we got there. Set to be scrapped, something a majority of Gauteng residents have been looking forward to for a very, very long time. The finance minister making the announcement yesterday. Uh, shutting down what really uh, is years of debate around the e-tolling system in Gauteng. Uh, so the government going to take over billions of Sanral's debt, making Sanral the biggest winner, if you will, in the medium-term budget policy statement. Let's uh, speak to the man who, from the very beginning, uh, was fighting this outer CEO, and almost a decade later, Wayne, I didn't hear the word scrapped from the finance minister, but that's essentially what has happened. Uh, how's the feeling this morning, now that you've digested everything? Yeah, yeah thanks, Gareth. Uh, definitely, um, that is the signal to the end of the scheme. Obviously, the transport minister still needs to undo that decision and declare these roads as non-tolled roads. Um, but anybody paying their e-toll bills from today onwards would be wasting their money. Uh, this was the result of, 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 of as I say, uh, over a decade of challenge. And, um, and, and, and now we can move forward on this matter. It was a decision that was delayed many years. It should have been taken some time ago. And they've introduced exactly what we suggested they should have done over a decade ago. So they wasted a lot of money. And essentially, we have to pay. That the public pays for all this uh, wasted time and money. And not just the wasted time when we talk about the history of it as well, Wayne, because uh, national government taking on 70 percent and then a Gauteng government taking on 30 percent of this. Where does that 30 percent come from? I mean, this is not going to be a free lunch. Uh, it's going to be taxes from elsewhere to pay that debt back. While government will pick up the tab now, they have to recoup that money from somewhere. What's your understanding where that's coming from? Well, it's uh, essentially the, of the outstanding debt. A lot of the debt has already been settled with interest. You know, the National Treasury has allocated over 22 billion rand to Sanro for the Gauteng Freeway Improvement Project as the tolling um, uh, debacle raged on. Uh, and um, so it's of the outstanding debt. The second part of that is that you must remember that Gauteng and all provinces get massive handouts from Treasury anyway. So indirectly, it is Treasury that's paying uh, towards this. And, and we've always said this is social infrastructure. It needs to be fund, uh, funded by uh, tax allocations, as they have been doing for decades, uh, to fund ETOLs or Sanral's non-TOL portfolio. Mm. Uh, this is the way uh, it, it, should be, it should have been done. And, and National Treasury's coffers are, are financed, and the fourth biggest uh, tranche of their revenue stream is through the fuel levy. Gauteng itself generates about 35% of the income to that fuel levy. So it comes from the national fiscus uh, in, the, in the long run anyway. Uh, we're not expecting, uh, do you think, some hidden taxes? Uh, I mean, uh, you mentioned the road accident fund, you mentioned the fuel levy. Do you suspect, uh, because we're all, we're all skeptical uh, counting residents, aren't we? Are we going to start seeing little taxes being snuck in elsewhere to maybe try and balance uh, the, the books at the end of all this? No, not not necessarily. We were we were we did anticipate that the minister would increase the fuel levy uh, to to compensate for this, but he didn't. And that was the wisest decision uh, he's made. He's increased that fuel levy for uh, you know quite a lot over two rand fifty cents in the last uh, since the Etol decision was made in two thousand and eight. That fuel levy has gone up. So no, and province doesn't tax. There's you know you either get taxed through your home levies or your vehicle. Uh, 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 licenses, uh, which is where they could do that. But the minute they do that, they interfere with licensing on other provinces. I, I'll tell you what would happen then. And it was one of the options they looked at is um, big fleet companies who have offices around the country. The minute Gauteng uh, distances itself or has a differential in its licensing fees, licenses of vehicles will now start taking place outside of Gauteng. So that wasn't an option for them. So we don't anticipate any additional taxes, no regional fuel levies, no regional taxes to compensate you. These are Gauteng's roads, and Gauteng needs to finance the upgrade of all its uh, road networks, as do provinces and metros uh, elsewhere. So this is nothing new. It's just this is where the cost should sit. And on top of that, Gareth... Gauteng needs to plan for its integrated uh, public transport systems. It's not just about widening roads to deal with congestion. It's about you and I having options to climb on a train or a bus and get to and from work safely and reliably and on time. Uh, and that's what developed cities around the world look like. Uh, and I'm, I'm afraid uh, Gauteng and the governments here have not 
uh, lived up to those expectations for many years, and, and maybe they've got to start looking at those and take them more seriously going forward. Well, as I say goodbye to you, I had a chance to speak to uh, Stephanie Fick, of course. Uh, you'll know who Stephanie is, uh, Wayne, but just to, to remind viewers, out as head of legal, I spoke to her on uh, today on ENC. I was looking after Dan Moyana's show yesterday. I asked her this question. I'd like to ask you the question as well. Almost a decade later, it does show that government does, in the end, have to listen to the citizens. Absolutely, and this is the this is the biggest civil disobedience campaign in our new democracy, and it just goes to show that you know when government introduces irrational policy and policies that are extremely expensive and not in the best interest of the people, the public have their power, and they need to exercise it peacefully and constructively, as we have done in this matter, and we've um, told them and showed them that they they cannot behave in this irrational way. They need to listen to citizens, and hopefully in future they will have learned from. Them. This, but it seems they haven't because the R2 decision they're trying to force through and others. So, you know, let's keep using our citizen power and uh, make sure that government uh, stays on track when it comes to introducing policy that works for this country. Oh, Wayne Duvenage, thank you very much indeed. It's been a long fight and seemingly it has all paid off in the end. Just a shame about all those people who've paid their uh, e toll fees over all these years. That was